Bring the smoke marks into 576. Here is the front flue sheet or tube sheet. So this sheet was approximately 5 eighths of an inch thick steel plate and holes cut in it. And in the holes were all these pipes called the tubes and flues. The tubes were two and a quarter inches in diameter. The flues were three and a half inches in diameter. The reason for the flues in the larger diameter is on this manifold above me, there was a uh, 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 basically smaller bundles of pipes, if you will, that connected into these, all these different joint uh, uh, surfaces. That pipe carried steam directly from the boiler. That steam was essentially a wet steam coming directly from the boiler, pass through, go down through this bundle of pipes called superheater units. Those pipes would then in turn take the, the steam through them, through a series of pipes that had return bins, and they would go in and out various flues and then come back up to the dry side of the superheater header. So it was actually heating up the steam even to a higher temperature. Uh, it didn't increase pressure, but it, uh, it, it made the steam drier, which they could actually get more expansion and actually get more work. So it was therefore more efficient. So once the steam was dry, had five throttle valves that actuated on a cam. So the cam shaft actually went out through beyond the smoke box and was connected to linkage all the way up to the cab and the throttle was connected to the engineer could control uh, the, the, the throttle. As the engineer would open the throttle, each valve would, in sequence, open up, depending on how far he had the throttle open. These are the big speed delivery pipes that went down and fed the cylinders on both sides. Once the steam was used on both sides of the piston, unlike an internal combustion engine where you only get power on one side of the stroke or the, or the piston stroke, on a steam locomotive you get it on both sides, but after uh, it was used in the piston, it was exhausted, and the exhaust would come up through this manifold in the casting, actually, I'm not going to open that up right now, but the exhaust would come in and, and basically meet up at this location, and there was what they call a blast stand. The blast stand is what directed the exhaust up through a nozzle, up through the stack directly above it. That also created the draft on the pipe and pulled the heat, cinders and whatnot through the tubes and flues and out the stack. Today we're going to be pulling out the first flue uh, in the 576. As you can see, we have the majority of them cut and how these flues are installed, they're actually rolled into place. So once this flue and tube will pass through the sheet, there, there was a roll expander that would go in here and expand that tube and flue out so as to make a steam tight joint. They were also beaded over. They used a pneumatic hammer and they actually beaded the end of the flues over. They didn't do it with the tubes, but they did the flues. The other end was done the same way, but in addition, they were seal welded. So right now we have volunteers in the firebox in the electric chamber, like you hear now, actually cutting those welds loose. This one has been cut in the back end, also split, so that it uh, releases the grip. Now we're ready to pull it out. You can see basically how easy this is to pull out. Now get it out so far, 